guys. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with Pastor Rick. We're ready to get started with this week's pursuit. And we always start off with lots of food. Apparently, yeah. Um, this week is sweet week. Did you know that? No, but I love it. It's not. Yeah. Uh, but it is for us. So, so do we want to get some shout outs here? What we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Katie Carson made uh, some monkey bread. It's okay. like a chocolate. No, this is an Oreo. Oreo. Right. And then there's a hot chocolate. Wow. Monkey bread. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Go she, bananas. She uh, made um, churros. Is that, that's how you say it, right? Churro, churro, churros? Cheerios. Cheerios. She made churros for the small group, um, and uh, yeah. it was really great. She made them homemade right there. It was awesome. Nice. But spot. this isn't our icebreaker. We, no, we need to get started. Oh, wait, we got to give a shout out to Miss Richter. Oh, that's right. Yep. Mrs. Richter made these uh, muffins this week. Yeah. Um, and they're still good. And there were only two left for today. And, yeah. So that's the sovereignty of God and how that Absolutely. organized it all out for us today, great. for us to enjoy. Yeah. All right. All right. So it's my turn your this turn. week. We your get turn. started yep. with our icebreaker. We're hoping you're with your small groups right now and you're getting to mm-hmm. know each other through these times. Um, some good times are being shared of what I'm hearing. A lot of people are sharing their, their major things. Mm-hmm. Uh, last night, I uh, met with my, my small group, and we talked about the fear, the one we talked about, the things we, the weird things we don't like. Oh, yeah. Pastor Kivett with feet, you with hair, mm-hmm. me with glitter. Um, it was just more of an, an open, honesty kind of nice. thing. All right, so here we go. Um, okay, it's a good one. Mm. Tell about something you should probably throw away, but can't. Ooh. Okay, this is, I actually drew that card last week. I think that was one we had used, but I didn't oh. use that question. Okay, okay so awesome. Good. So you prepared. One thing you should throw away but can't. Oh, no, man. you personally, not just me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, so I that shirt, Rick. You should throw that away. <laughs> I've been waiting for this conversation. <laughs> Let's have a moment. Um, so for me, it's it's clothes. I've got clothes that I've had. I mean, seriously, mm-hmm. I've had for quite a while now, mm-hmm. and. Um, Sydney will consistently kind of, hey, you need to throw out those shirts. I'm like, no, they, they still fit. They're still good. They're yeah. still useful. Yeah. I've got way too many clothes, I yeah. know. But at the same time, I don't want to replace them. And I'm mm-hmm. afraid, you know, what if I want to wear this? So yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. Is there a specific type of clothing? It's so just... T-shirts. T-shirts okay. are a big one. I've got a ton of T-shirts. All right. Um, but, I mean, I, I don't wear T-shirts into the office. No. I mean, I only wear them when I'm at home, basically, yeah. and working around the yard, like, there's no way I go through that many T-shirts, but do you have clothes that like you're cool with wearing around the house? But if you leave the house, your wife's like, you need to go change immediately. Oh no, I do that to myself. I okay. censor myself. You do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My... So I, I will not go out in these clothes. So that's why it's important for me to know yeah. if we're going out to run an errand, do I have to get out of the car? Because that's going to dictate if I have to change. Yeah, my my wife is good on that. Like you're not going out of the house dressed like that. Mm. And my my daughter now, who's become my fashionista, she's like, Dad, yeah. um, those are your paint shorts, and we're not going to the store that way. We're mm. not going out to eat like that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, it is, I think it would be clothes too. Okay. Um, but for me, it's, um, it's like, it's socks because I have a lot, I have some socks, but then, you know, one hole, come on, man. But when okay. the big toe starts sticking through, yeah. you're like, I probably should get rid of this. But then I don't think about it. Just throw it in the dryer or throw it in the washing machine to get it. And I'm like, oh no, there it is again. Yeah. It's not like I have some kind of relationship with it. It's just, I yeah. just keep, I realize it when I put it on and the big toe sticks out again. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to throw that away. The good thing though is, is most of the time when you're around people, you have shoes on though. Most of the time, right. yeah. Most. And I don't wear socks with sandals because that's the sad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I will feel like we've been vulnerable with you in this moment. Uh, so take some time right now in, in your group to discuss what is something that you need to throw away, but just can't bring yourself to do it. All right, so today, Pastor Kivett was finishing up on the armor of God, talking about the sword of uh, the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so we talked about that and looked at actually in Matthew uh, chapter 6, where, nope, Matthew 4, mm-hmm. where, um, where Jesus is tempted by Satan and kind yeah. of looking at that and what we see from that. And even looking at Genesis 2 with Adam and Eve is Satan tempts when we are most vulnerable. And so mm-hmm. we talked about with Jesus, he... He had been without food for that long. I'm sure he was tired. He was exhausted. And and so knowing this, though, uh, the question that kind of comes from this is, okay, then, when are you most vulnerable? Yeah, and Pastor Kivett shared that. He he gave different scenarios. He said it could be after a big victory. Mm -hmm. You have just really um, nailed this thing, or maybe maybe it was something at work or something in your own ministry. Maybe you just came back from having a discipleship moment with someone, and that's when you got got hit Mm -hmm. with the temptation. Um, And I would... 
you know, I think sharing this with group would be a good time to really is a moment of being vulnerable with each other. Mm. Um, this is the, the really the good part about these small groups is these are the moments where we start looking after each other. Mm. So if I find out that Harper's tempted most when after a big success, mm. then I can be there to go, hey, let's be on guard because you just nailed it here at yeah. work, you're killing it, but, but what are you doing to keep this you know, protect that. And so it's just ways where you're looking out for one another. Yeah, and as a, again, kind of thinking through this, well, what times would this be? Uh, I think back to something I read a, a while back. Uh, John Piper used this acronym HALT, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Mm. And so talking about those being some of those key moments. So if you can't, you know, if nothing comes to mind, maybe think of that mm. and think, okay, which one of these seems to, do I notice in my own life yeah. uh, is more for me, I guess. And I've heard that with the acronym of BLAST, bored, oh. um, lazy, anxious or angry, hmm. um, sad, tired. So, so nice. yes, yeah, all those little things work. Yeah. And, and you're right, those are big moments in temptation. Um, but I think each of us has that, that, oh, that yeah. thing, hey, when I am most tempted when this mm -hmm. happens. And usually it's really tied into our personality. Yeah. So take some time right now with your group to discuss what are those moments where you are most vulnerable to these temptations and take the time to really be honest with your group and, and let this be a time where you grow together close to one another. Well, in Pastor Kivett's um, sermon, he did take us to Matthew chapter 4 talking about the temptation of Jesus mm -hmm. and how did Jesus handle the temptation um, from Satan and he used scripture. And, you know, Harper, you've grown up in church, you've heard this too, the idea of if we memorize scripture, that'll help us during temptation. Mm -hmm. And I have to be honest, I think that's true to an extent, but I think in dealing with counselees and, and, and dealing with people regularly, I find that I know people who will put the memory verse on the fridge and they're struggling with gluttony but they're still gonna open the fridge. They've got it memorized. Mm. Um, so what is it? There's gotta be something more to it. And as I was listening to Pastor Kivett speak, we started, I started looking at all of these things that Satan was telling Jesus, and mm -hmm. they were all lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a little bit of truth to them, but they were all lies. Right. So we are regularly flooded with the lies that Satan tells us in these temptations, these, in these vulnerable moments. They're all lies. So I thought I would ask, and we could ask our groups are, mm -hmm. what are the lies that we individually so easily believe? And sometimes they're just about ourselves. Yeah. What do we believe about ourselves? Hmm. No, that's good because it's, it's not that Satan, I mean, even in using these lies, it's not that he uses these blatant lies or anything yeah. crazy. It's yeah. just these, he takes what God says and he tweaks it just a little bit. Yeah. Believable just lies. Just enough, like yeah. what Pastor Kibbett was saying, where um, it's, it's more comfortable. It's mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's not as difficult or challenging, or you know, we're able to accomplish the same thing in our minds, but through an easier way, our way instead of God's ways. And so, when we believe those lies, it's really because we want to believe this. We yeah. would love to believe that this is true, uh, just like with Adam and Eve. Man, if I could eat this and I could be just like God, and I could. Yeah, and to an extent, yeah, you are like God because now you are able to do this, but you don't have the power that God has to be able to control that. And you're not that you are not God, but you have some of these things that, yeah, now it's going to be a curse to you instead of a help like what you believed it would yeah. be. And Paul Tripp says that the most influential voice in our lives is our own voice. Mm -hmm. And so we sometimes adopt these lies and believe them about ourselves yeah. and regularly tell them to ourselves. Things like, ah, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. I'll never figure this out. I don't, I'll don't. i never measure up or that mm -hmm. person or this person is better. And we, we tell ourselves this lie constantly. Right. So what we the first thing we have to do is identify what the lie is. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we thought we challenged our groups with. Yeah. Yeah. Take some time right now and talk about this with your groups. What are, what are some of the lies that we believe so easily? All right. So based on that last question that you just answered in your group or for yourself, uh, it kind of brings us to this next point. Okay. If we identify the lie that we can more easily believe, mm -hmm. then what is the truth from God's word? that we need to uh, combat that with. And Pastor Kivett kind of gave some examples of, hey, you know, here's some scripture, here's some truths to speak over yourself, to remind yourself of the gospel, to remind yourself of what God has said instead of believing this lie. Yeah, and I really enjoyed how Pastor Kivett made it personal. He kept saying, mm -hmm. Kivett, you need to do this and quoting scripture. Yeah. And so it's not so much the memorizing scripture because if I memorize scripture, I won't face temptation. Right. 
or even memorizing scripture I won't give in. It's more about memorizing what God has revealed about himself and about my identity yeah. so that I can combat that lie that Satan's trying to push on me. Yeah, and as he's talking, you know, a lot of times, again, we can easily be so entrenched in a situation where we don't have the full perspective and we're not even, when we're in the midst of it, we cannot think as clearly as we can sometimes when we are out of a, when we are outside of a situation. A lot of times when, when talking about, you know, okay, how do you coach yourself through this or help yourself? Yeah. You know, some people even mentioned, well, what would you tell someone else who's going through the same thing? And suddenly it's like, yeah. people are like, oh, well, I would tell them this, this, and this. Oh, okay, I see. But when you're in it yourself, it is difficult. And so this is drawing your eyes up to where your help comes from. We're looking up past our situation. We're looking to the one that has control, the one who has power, and the one who can give us the truth we need for what we're going through. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we pull ourselves out of that situation, uh, kind of theoretically, where mm -hmm. we're able to gain a better perspective and not be so focused just on that present, but be focused on the eternal. Yeah, Brad Hambrick, who is the counseling uh, pastor at the Summit Church, mm -hmm. he talks about we have false scripts, we believe, like we talked mm -hmm. about in the last section, but this is where we start speaking true script from scripture. Yeah. What is the truth about this situation? Mm -hmm. Rather than letting my circumstances define my theology, how do I let my theology define the circumstances I'm going through? Oh yeah, and positive talk, especially in the last right. five to 10 years has become such a big thing with people who are not necessarily even religious, but right. there is a thing where when you are, when you have this positivity that yeah. you're, you're- Based just, on the truth, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you're, when you're having this positivity that you're just having in your mind and speaking and reminding yourself of, it can help you and so even with especially when we're talking about God's truth, right. not just positive thoughts or good vibes, mm -hmm. but man, what could that do and how does that help us? Yeah. So take some time right now with your group to discuss this. Building on that last question of what are the lies we so easily believe, what is now the truth um, from God's word that we can now apply to those lies that we hold on to? Well, thanks again for joining us on another episode of The Pursuit. As we always like to tell you, you can watch previous episodes of The Pursuit by clicking the link provided on the screen. Yeah, you can go back and watch past sermon videos as well. And if you subscribe to our channel, you get the videos immediately as soon as we post it. Hey, thanks for joining us. And Pastor Rick and I are going to act like we're talking as we leave. <laughs>